What's up? This is Jeremy Chaikheim with Duke Student Broadcasting, and tonight I'm interviewing Ryan Herger with Duke Chronicle uh, about the game versus Georgia Tech. Um, so let's begin with uh, shooting. So tonight we shot a lot, lot better than we did against Maryland. Uh, what kind of factors might uh, do you think might have affected that? Well, the first thing you noticed was that uh, Duke came out really aggressively uh, on both ends of the court, uh, and really the defense kind of fueled the offense. Rodney Hill comes down straight away and hit nails a three for Duke. He hits two th his first two threes, uh, and that really opened the floodgates for Duke. Um, there's a con shooting is sometimes contagious. Uh, once the ball starts going in for one person, it starts going in for everybody. Uh, Duke knocked down seven three-pointers in the first half, and that really was able uh, what enabled them to build a huge lead. Um, but in the second half, again, Duke kind of faltered a little bit with the shooting. Uh, they only shot, uh, they shot worse than 30% in the second half, uh, and that's something that uh, is maybe a little cause for concern, but it was more than enough to get the job done tonight. So moving to defense for a minute. Um, compared to Maryland, where we also had a hard time keeping them from scoring, it seemed like every bucket they threw up went down. What was different tonight? Uh, well, the thing that really stood out to me was Duke's perimeter defense. They put a lot of ball pressure uh, on the ball handlers for Georgia Tech. Uh, Quinn Cook, Rashid Juleman, and Tyler Thornton all did a great job of that. Uh, and that did a couple things. One, it disrupts Georgia Tech's offense in general. They have to start their offense farther out uh, from the basket. They can't really drive the lane as much as they would like to because we're put, uh, Duke is playing such good tight defense. Uh, and the second thing it does is it disrupts passing lanes uh, in terms of finding an outlet or a safety valve and also in terms of getting the ball into the post. Uh, Georgia Tech center Daniel Miller is having a great season this year, but tonight he was really contained not only by the Blue Devil forwards and centers down low, but because this, uh, the, the guards out front were not allowing uh, any uh, clean passes to get into the middle for him. And so overall, between the better shooting and much better defense, uh, this game looked a whole lot better than we looked against Maryland. Uh, how does this look coming down the stretch with their two big games against UNC and against Syracuse later this week? Right, and Coach K mentioned after the game, uh, they went five for five subbing for a good portion of the first half and the second half, and that maybe saved some legs a little bit for uh, a couple games coming up, right at one right after another. Uh, so I think that uh, Duke definitely came out with tonight with a sense of urgency. They didn't. Uh, there are some people who thought this could be a trap game for Duke, uh, but coming on the road to play Georgia Tech, who doesn't have the record of North Carolina and Syracuse. Um, but I think that if Duke plays the way they did tonight, especially on the defensive end, they should be in any game they play this weekend. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, uh, th this is Jeremy Chaikine for Ryan Herger, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>